So financial independence in in the truest sense is for me when you are officially at a point where you don't have to work anymore. You're officially retired if you so choose. But the goal of that is, is that you can start to have a lifestyle that kind of mimics financial independence earlier on. If you're very careful and you are paying off debt and you're intentional with your spending and if you're not letting it get out of control, I think you can actually live some of those benefits sooner. And so that's kind of what I what I believe is that you can have this really cool life if you are willing to do the hard work now. You can actually have that life sooner than 65 years old. Find out how Whitney made the big leap with her finances in today's episode. Welcome to the Couple Money Podcast, the show where we share stories and advice on building up your marriage and wealth together. I'm Elle Martinez. Support for this podcast comes from Jumpstart Your Marriage and Your Money Masterclass. This self-paced course is designed to help you Get on the same page with money, dump your debt faster, and build wealth as a team. Sign up today for the course and get lifetime access. Just head over to couplemoney.com slash jumpstart. I've been noticing a shift lately. When money comes up, a big goal and motivation I hear from friends, family, neighbors, and work buddies is this idea of having more options. It's not about a specific amount in the bank or retiring by a certain date. It's about being drawn to financial freedom because people don't want to be stuck at a career they don't like or in a situation because they are just overwhelmed with debt. My guest today, Whitney Hansen, knows all about that desire to have more options and less debt. Today, we're going to talk about and get into what motivated her to fast track paying off her student loans, how she was able to get rid of $30,000 in less than a year, and what first steps she suggests if you want to be debt free sooner rather than later. Let's begin with something that I hear with a lot of financial experts. If you have low interest debts like student loans or a mortgage, It's wiser to invest and contribute that money towards retirement rather than pay off the loan sooner. And I know when you run the numbers, it does seem like that is the smart choice. But again, personal finance is personal. So why in the world would Whitney want to push herself to pay these low interest federal student loans? Well, for me, I was looking at I studied accounting in undergraduate. And so it was good and it was okay. But once I graduated, I realized after working in public accounting, it was not for me. And I sat there looking at this and I was like, okay, $30,000 of debt. That is almost my entire salary for a year. And I'm looking at like the cost benefit. I'm like, my God, that's a lot of money. And so for me, it was kind of just like a no brainer because I started to realize that that debt was making decisions for me. So it was starting to dictate like what kinds of jobs did I take? How long did I stay in a job that I really didn't like because it was paying the bills and helping me pay off debt? So it's like I was looking at that stuff and realizing that it plays such a big role in our lives, whether we think so or whether it's subconsciously, but it is dictating some of the decisions that we make. And so for me, I didn't want that to be the case. I wanted to truly be free to make my own decisions regardless of what financial implications came out and be able to have the confidence to take on a new job, uh, the confidence to say, no, this job isn't for me because it's not what I want. And I think not having that debt for me, that's what I could do is have more confidence in my choices. Besides having this confidence, Whitney was also drawing upon a lesson she had learned from growing up. It was definitely one of those life lessons, but it came directly from growing up. So what I, I grew up in a really crappy childhood, not not a great, very good family. It was kind of sad. But I watched my mom stay in an abusive relationship because she didn't have money to leave the situation. And it sounds like everybody thinks, yeah, if you have the money, that's that's not really what was keeping her there. But in a lot of ways, it was. And it was because she had six kids that she had to take care of, too. And being a single mom with no education and going out into the world and trying to put your foot down is really scary. And I know that's what a lot of women go through, too. And so that's where I started to realize that money actually matters a lot. And if you are constantly struggling or you don't have your own money, you can be stuck in situations that are less than ideal 
solely because of money. So that's where I initially learned and started to realize that it was a bigger deal than we thought it was. As a listener of the show, I'm sure this resonates with you why she decided to go this route. But a lot of people in her circle just weren't getting it. I I got a lot of disbelief and people didn't really think I could do it. And to be fair, I wasn't rolling in the dough. Like whenever I share this story, people are like, oh, you had to have been making six figures. That was actually not the case at all. I've always lived like a college student. So that's what I did a little longer too. And so when I would share with them what I was trying to do, they would immediately do this like analysis in their head of like, can you actually do that? Is that mathematically possible? And for them, they didn't see that it was possible. So therefore they projected what they thought was possible for their own lives onto me. And many of that was, you can't do that. That's not going to work. What if this happens? What about this? Uh, How are you going to live? What about your, your quality of life? And I was like, you know, I can do a lesser quality of life for a year to have a better quality in my entire future. Like that's okay for me. But people just, there was a lot of naysayers. They didn't think it was possible. They didn't think I could do it. And it was, it was frustrating, but I used it as motivation to kind of fuel me and get me excited and be like, I'll show you. And and it worked. Fortunately, Whitney's boyfriend, now fiance, was very supportive, even if he didn't quite understand the rush. We have been dating since high school. So I think now we're going on something like 14 or 15 years. I lost track at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so we were we were dating. We were uh, at that time. We did not live together yet. So I had my own home. He had his own home. And he was very, very supportive of the entire paying off debt process. He didn't think that I should be so intense with the (laughs) the level I was going. Like many couples, Whitney and Tony were coming at it from different perspectives based on their background. He's he's been very blessed that he didn't have to take on any student loans or any debt like that. So he's been very, very blessed. We grew up in very different financial situations where mine was very much scarcity mindset. His was abundance. And so that was... It was a struggle sometimes emotionally where you see people that I I don't want to say get everything handed to them because that's certainly not what's going on. But it can feel that way when you are legitimately like clawing at every little inch and you're just trying to make your own path. It can sometimes feel that way when you see your significant other going through that stuff, too. So that was it was a a challenge when I was paying off debt. I, I did. I got really frustrated sometimes and I felt like that's not fair. But it. Even if it's not fair, that's the the cards I was dealt and I had to deal with it. So it was a little frustrating sometimes for sure. Ready to tackle this ambitious goal, Whitney created a process to help make sure she followed through. So for me, the process was cut my expenses down to pretty much zero, only the bare minimum and truly only the bare minimum. That means even grocery shopping, it was simply what I had on my list. What do I need to get me through the next week or two? And so that's kind of the process that I used was just the bare minimum, truly. And there were some tough choices she had to make. Everything else was gone. No Starbucks, no eating out, nothing at all. Um, No road trips so I could go, you know, extra money for gas. It was just very, very bare bones. And so that was the process that I used. And one of the cool things about working two jobs that I think is very helpful is you can you can actually separate your finances, your your income a little bit easier because you clearly have two different paychecks. And when you have the two different paychecks, I don't know why, but like psychologically, it's just easier to say, I don't have this check. I'm only going to live on this one. And so I continued to live on my salon income, which was what got me through undergrad. So I continued living on that because I knew I could already survive on barely nothing. And then all of my accounting paychecks immediately went to my debt. So I was paid once a month at the accounting firm and I would just immediately take that check. I would put it on my debt and just move on. And so that was the process, but I also knew there was that six-month grace period with federal loans that I had this little tiny window of opportunity to make a bigger bang for my buck. And so that's what I started to do was how do I make the biggest bang for my buck in six months? And that's essentially what I would do is roll my accounting check to the debt, um, live on absolutely pretty much zero. And then I also sold all of my furniture from my house which was such a heartbreaking moment for me. And I know that sounds kind of lame, but that's, I was so excited to have all my own furniture and and just my, my interior design and all of that fun stuff. So I was really stoked about that, but that was a big chunk of money too that went to the debt that I saw immediately. It was like $1,500. I saw that drop down by, and that was enough of a good kickstart that I was like, okay, I can do this. And so I just kept going from there. 
Now that she's on the other side, Whitney is happy she's debt free. And she realizes how important it is to look at purchases beyond the price tag. Yeah, the first step to paying off debt would be to start to reframe your purchases into a way that makes sense for you. So instead of immediately going and saying, I'm going to buy this shirt for $50 or whatever a shirt costs these days, instead of doing that, reframe it into how many hours do I have to work to pay this off? And so I think if you can train your brain to start thinking that way, that for one thing prevents a lot of debt. And then the second thing is it starts to help you realize that your debt's a bigger deal than you think it is sometimes. And so if you start to put in how many hours of my life do I have to give up in order to pay for this or get rid of this, you start to appreciate your finances a little bit more and it starts to help you make better decisions naturally. So that's where I would start. Funny thing is when I asked Whitney about her financial independent life that she was working towards, she told me it was pretty close to what she's doing now. I'm actually doing the exact same stuff I'm doing today, which is helping people with their money and helping them become better and more equipped to handle all of life's mishaps. That's what I'm really passionate about. That's what I really like. But I think I would also be writing books and I'm not doing that currently, but I, I would definitely include that into my future plan. Special thanks to Whitney for coming on and sharing her story. If you'd like to learn more about how she was able to knock down the debt so fast, she has a workshop that will take you through the process. It's over at WhitneyHanson.com. You can also check out the show notes where I have some of my favorite posts, links to her workshops, and more resources to help the two of you speed up getting rid of your debt now. Just head over to CoupleMoney.com. And don't forget, the Jumpstart Your Marriage and Your Money course is out now. Jumpstart focuses on the big wins, like paying off your debts. Get lifetime access to a four-week course designed to help you to stop fighting about money and build wealth together. You can pick it up at couplemoney.com slash jumpstart. Finally, I want to say thank you so much for your help. Couple Money Podcast is made possible because of awesome listeners like you. Your tweets, reviews, likes are so encouraging. Thanks for sharing the episodes. I'd love to have more conversations started about building wealth together. If there's a topic or question you want to hear covered on the show, just let me know. My email is l at couplemoney.com. I hope you have a great week. Take care.